So we're talking about this word here, rapport, right? So it looks like report, but um, so there's a word report, right? In all our jobs, we have to write reports. And if you're in school, you have to have a report um, created. Um, one second, I've got a WhatsApp coming in here. Um, I don't have the link. Um, right, let me let me just um, send the link to um, people. There we go. Yeah, so rapport is like a French word. So that's how we pronounce it, rapport. And rapport is the idea of building a relationship with somebody for the first time. Um, and sometimes we also talk about breaking the ice. You know, when you don't know somebody, you don't know like, where to begin. And this is very yeah. important. This, is a, this would be important in your field, like to, you know, in an ambassadorial field where you're meeting you know, important people uh, for the first time, lots of different people. And you, you may have a long-term relationship with that person, right? Because you might be in a post for say two years, three years, I don't know, five years. And that other person is somebody you might be working with. And they could be on your side or they could be on the other side, yeah? So salesmen mm -hmm. go through a lot of training like this because a salesman or saleswoman, you know, needs to build a relationship with somebody in order to sell them something. So salespeople, yeah. a good salesperson is very, very good at rapport building. Like rapport mm -hmm. building is almost the key skill you need to be a good salesperson. Right? And the way you do it is, there's a few rules, right? But the, the first thing is you don't get down to business immediately, right? So you don't say, right, you know, are you going to buy my products, right? Because <laughs> they'll just say no. <laughs> Why yeah. would I do that, right? You don't do yeah. that. What you're trying to do, what you're actually selling in rapport building is yourself. Yeah. So you're being friendly, you're being open, um, you're asking questions of them. Um, it, it's a very good policy to ask open questions so so questions mm -hmm. where it's not a yes or no answer yeah you know because otherwise they'll just say yes right yeah or no um so what you do is um uh, um it looks like you've joined so we're just talking about rapport building uh you know um angeli asked me that question so, so, so it's a little bit indirect. So if I was meeting you for the first time, Anjali, I might say something like, hey, Anjali, where do you come from? And you would say, uh, Bihar, is it Bihar? Yeah, yeah, Bihar. Yeah. You would say, actually, it's uh, Bihar in India. And I'd say, oh, I would immediately use whatever I know to ask another question of what's called a follow-up question, right? So I'll say, oh yeah, that's North India, isn't it? On the Eastern side. And you'll respond, yeah, it's la, 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 la. And then I'll say something like that would try to interest you. So I might say, I've actually been to India, did you know? Um, I've actually been to India five times, which is not too bad for a Ferengi. And you would probably laugh because I had said that word Ferengi, I even knew that word, you see? So for Alida and Eo's benefit, Ferengi means foreigner, right? And that's what they call us white people. Um, we're Ferengis, right? So I would say that. And then, yeah, so I get you to laugh a little bit and your, your guard is immediately becoming down. You see, when you meet somebody the first time, your guard's up, you see? And so what you want to do is people to let their guard down. So, so what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is make you my friend, right? 
I, I want to get you to, you to trust me because you will buy something. If I'm trying to sell, if I'm being a salesman, you will buy something from somebody you trust. If you don't trust the person, you won't buy from them. No matter you know, how good the car is I'm trying to sell you or you know, how nice the phone is I'm trying to sell you, you won't buy it unless you trust me. And um, so I'm trying to get you to do that. You see, so I'll, I, I'll talk a bit about that and I'll say, I have been to Calcutta though, which I know geographically is not too far away. And I could say, and I would love to go to the Sindarabans, um, but I would hate to be eaten by one of the Bengal tigers. <laughs> and you might laugh at that. And then I might say, I love that honey that comes from that part of the world. I've actually had two lots of it shipped to me. It's very runny honey, but it's, it's very sweet and lovely. It's quite different in texture from what we have in Scotland. And so I'm doing a lot of talking just now, but basically when you're rapport building, I will try and do minimal talking and get you to do the talking. If I'm re building rapport with you, I will say, you know, where you're brought up in that part of India or if you moved there, blah, 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 blah. Then I'll ask you, you know, maybe about what stage you're at, are you at university, are you working? Like in a, in a business context, you're normally working already, so you're in a company, um, and so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm getting you to talk, and as you talk, I'll ask follow-up questions. And before the end of the conversation, you know, I've built a rapport with you. And you mightn't trust me like you'd trusted Booz and Pal, but your guard is way down, Right. Uh, and so the next conversation is going to be easier. And so so, on. so that's what rapport building is in a nutshell. That's a, a good expression we say, by the way, in a nutshell. It's just an English expression that we use to mean, um, what does it mean? In a like, nutshell. I, yeah, I know that. You know that one. But the other girls won't know that expression, right? So let's look at Yes, sir. You, you know I it? know it because... You do, you do know it? Uh, Alina, yeah, because know it? so there is a book, um, there is a book writing by Stephen Hawking that uh, has this title. Oh, right. The Universe in a Nutshell. Okay. It's like in good. a simple word, maybe. Very good. So if you, I've just looked it up and shared my screen. And uh, in a nutshell, phrase means in the fewest possible words. She put the matter in a nutshell. So what I have just tried to do, and how I used that, that expression was, I tried to describe what rapport building was in a nutshell. And in in just in a few words, I got to the point of what it is. And hopefully it made sense. Now, I would not dare to try to describe the universe in a nutshell. <laughs> but but Stephen Hawking can maybe do that, uh, but it, took, it would take him a book to do it. I have his famous, famous, famous book, A Brief yeah, Decay of Time. I've got that one, A Brief History of Time. Okay, so now back to Anjali. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, you know, I have observed one thing. When people try so hard to build a rapport, am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes. Rapport. Okay. So when people try so hard, then uh, actually there are like awkward pauses in between. I think the the other side, I, I mean, the listener uh, is not interested in that thing and there are awkward pauses. Yeah, so, so that brings up another point, which is the ability to read another person, right? Mm -hmm. So, so if, if I'm trying to build rapport with you and it's a bad time, right? It's just, you, you're maybe not feeling well that day. You've maybe got some stuff going on in your life outside of work. 
and I cannot get your attention, right? No matter how hard I try and how charming I am in speaking to you, I cannot get your attention. What will happen is a good salesperson will not be persistent. And what they'll do is they'll say, we'll back off a bit and say, um, is there maybe another time I could call you, Angela, and speak about this? And then you maybe say, actually, yes, because you know what? I'm at, it's kind of near the end of the day and I need to go in a minute and I have to pick up somebody and blah, blah, blah. Maybe could we speak tomorrow? And I'll say, yeah, no problem. Um, how are you fixed in the morning? What about, what, about, what about coffee in the morning at half past 10? Would that suit you? And you say, yeah. And so now I've achieved, uh, achieved my objective, right? Because I got the next call at a time yeah. that suits you and you've agreed mm -hmm. to see me. So when you see me, you're going to be this, right? An eager beaver. <laughs> which is just a nice little expression to describe somebody who's a bit keen. It's completely new. Eager beaver, mm -hmm. a keen and enthusiastic person who works very hard. Yeah? So, uh, like, uh, how, how did you connect this expression? How did you fit this expression in this conversation? Well, I wasn't using it uh, in the sense of somebody who's hardworking um, so much as I was using it in the context of saying you're, you're eager. Yeah. Because we have arranged this time. We're going to meet. We're going to chat. I'm going to buy you coffee. So as, a, as a net result of that, human nature says you're going to give me time. Yeah. Eager means very keen, right? Eager means keen. Yeah. Keen. Keen. Eager, keen. Yeah. So eager. Yeah. So let's define that word, right? Let's just look up eager. Dictionary meaning is strongly wanting to do or have something. The man was eager to please. Eager to please is an expression we use in English a lot. All right, so I'll write the word eager because it's key. It's a, okay. And eager to please is another very common expression. Oh, that child is eager to please, right? She'll do anything. She's eager to please. Yeah. Another word a bit like this in the same universe is earnest. If I could spell it right, E A R E N E N E C. So the first word was eager, and this word is earnest. And this word, the definition here is resulting from or showing sincere and intense conviction. An earnest student. So Eo will really enjoy her class teaching if her students are earnest, right? They're, they're very focused. I can say without any danger of flattery that all three of you ladies are very both eager and earnest. Yeah. Yeah. You'd probably use eager in the context of education more than earnest, but you might say earnest with respect to something like religious convictions. You know, he was earnest in his belief. Say, as an example. And there's quite a famous playwright in he was Irish actually called Oscar Wilde he's got very many very witty things that he said and he wrote plays and poems 
And one, he wrote one that was called The Importance of Being Earnest. And, and that's a pun because he's saying it's important to be earnest. <laughs> and he's also saying he's talking about a man because it's, in fact, my father in law is called Ernest, right? So it's a name. Sorry, it's sorry, a, can, you, can you repeat the last part? Yeah. So Ernest is also a name. You know, like you can have a girl's name, like Joy or, yeah, or Charity. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so these kind of nice attributes can also be used in male names. Um, but Joy would be a female name, but Ernest would be a male name, right? And my father-in-law is actually called Ernest. Your father-in-law, his yeah. name is Ernest. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not too common anymore, but it, it, it was common. Okay. So if I yeah. go back to this, Theo, you've got a question? <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry. Um, sir, so there is like maybe other different uh, grammar category for this word. So I mean, could be like an adverb or something like that. Yeah. I think you describe that as an adjective because it's describing a person, describing a noun. So it would be an adjective. Yeah. So uh, let's look it up. Adjective. Yeah. Adjective. See that? And eager would also be an adjective. Eager. Adjective. So I could say Eo is an eager girl. Or woman. Senorita. <laughs> And, and as well as eager, I could use an, a synonym would be a word like keen, right? Keen. Keen. Define keen. Having or showing eagerness or enthusiasm. See that? Sir, oh. I, have a, I have a question with this word, uh, keen. Yeah. <laughs> In some few, uh, few days ago, um, I talked uh, with a person from the United States. And I don't know, I, I write to him something like, eh, I'm not keen on that or something like that. And he said that this word doesn't exist. And so I wonder why, <laughs> because so I, eh, I don't know how I have, a, I haven't, sorry, um, I have listened eh, to this word before to my teacher. And I searched for this, eh, search for this one on, on the web and I sent him yeah the screenshot of that of that work uh, exists yeah. and he said uh, and sorry he said to me that this word is not very common and i don't know so i i was very strange because i i i told him yeah. that maybe in united states because i don't know i i haven't um seen this word before also for example in my school and I don't know, I was uh, shocked with this, um, I didn't know how to do with that person. <laughs> right. okay. So well, here's he tried... the clue, here's the clue. You see what I've had, it says British. Yeah, but so in the Cambridge Dictionary also say that is USA. I didn't know, yeah. So I, I was shocked because I, I wondered why? <laughs> Does so, it first exist? of all, right, so, so first of all, I'm gonna correct the pronunciation you've got. See this word here you're using? You see it? Sorry, sir. The word shock, shock it. You say you said shock it twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm laughing at you um, because we don't say shock it. We say shock, shocked. Shocked. Okay. Shocked. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, yes, I, I have a, a, a um, huge problem with this pronunciation of the E's. A yeah, type of ED. 
H and is like this, right? It's as if it's like this. S H O C K T, like that. Shocked. Sh shocked. See that? It's not a word now, the way I spelled, but that's what we're saying. Shocked. Shocked. See, can you see what I'm doing with my mouth there? You're all laughing at me. Lila's laughing her leg off at me. Shocked. I maybe you can't see it because of the, the, the light behind me. If I come around like this, see my face better? Shocked. 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 Yeah. Again. Shocked. Shocked. It's a K, right? Shocked. Yes. Really? <laughs> exactly. Alida? Shock. Shocked. Shocked. Yes. That's it. <laughs> It's quite, it's quite a strong T at the sign. It's not, you know, it's really a T. You're saying shocked, shocked. Yeah, yeah, not shocked. <laughs> yeah. So getting back to the point, keen is obviously a British word. I, I didn't know that before you pointed that out. We would say that word a lot. Keen. So I said eager or keen. Eager or keen means the same thing. Look, having a showing eagerness. A keen gardener, right? You ladies are keen language learners. You're keen. So it's not, it's not like you just turn up. You want to do it, yeah? You phone me up and say, Where, why haven't we got a class on today, Alan? Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> okay, so you're keen. Now, let's go to um, this list. We were working through this the other day, and we didn't get very far. Where did we get to, Anjali? Can you remember? I think stubborn. Stubborn was the last word. Okay. See, I, I knew you would just remember. <laughs> so we'll start we'll start the next one and work through this and the girls from Colombia can watch that lesson if you want and we'll do you you'll get the first six words so we spent the whole lesson and we only did six words I mean we did obviously other words because I say other things and you know with lots of diversions but I think this word, this, there's 74 words in this list. And this idea was suggested by Elham. Um, and it's words to describe personality. That's the theme here. Right? Words to describe personality. I'm just going to change my glasses because I actually can't see very well with uh, these glasses. These are my long distance glasses, and these are my computer glasses. So I look a bit more studious now, you see. I'm, I'm matching, yeah. I'm matching the leader and 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 uh, Eo. <laughs> me too, me too. I also wear glasses. <laughs> okay. So we're all we're all studious. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Okay, that's quite a collection of books you got behind you there, Anjali. It's a virtual background. Oh, it's a virtual see. <laughs> I, I learned that thing. I learned that thing very recently. So I'm using that thing in all the Zoom calls now. <laughs> I'm oh. enjoying that. <laughs> okay. Well, one day I'll do a class from my study and you'll see I have a I have a bookcase like that behind me and it's real. <laughs> and I'll, oh, yeah. it to you yeah. I'll, I'll lift some of the books that you put, want to see. Um, right, so loyal. Let's do loyal. Look at the definition here. Steadfast in allegiance or duty. Right? Loyal. So you could say the dog is very loyal to his master. <laughs> yeah? Loyal. So it sounds like royal, except it begins with an L loyal we would speak about loyal servants a loyal pet that would mostly be a dog the dog will do what its master wants and um, you could any association at all 
um, he's a very loyal student or he's very loyal to um, the military or he's very, you know, this kind of thing. Anything to do with allegiance. That's a good word there, allegiance. That's a good word. Or duty. Yeah. What's the pronunciation? Is it allegiance? Allegiance, yeah. Okay. So it's same would, as duty, same as duty. You would talk about um, you would talk about allegiance um, with respect to any kind of affiliation, right? Like political, right? You you could have allegiance to your party. Or you can speak about allegiance to a religion or an, an, an allegiance to your employer, right? Or you could talk about an allegiance to your calling, right? So um, EO's maybe working as a teacher. And I could say, do you fancy doing a different job? Now, she might say, yeah, I would actually, I wouldn't find, mind a change, let's say within five years. Or she might say, actually, no, I, I'm always going to be a teacher. It's really my calling. I've got a huge allegiance to it. See? So you see, you see the meaning of the word? It's, it's, the, it's any kind of connection with something else where loyalty is seen as a good thing. It's certainly a very good word to describe, you know, personality, characteristics of a personality. Okay. Right, we'll move on to the next one. Gullible. I'll write it in the chat so we get all the words. Gullible. Naive and easily deceived or tricked. Now, first of all, naive. Do you know what naive means? Now, Angela, don't you answer this because I know you'll know what it means. But Eo um, and Alida, do you know what naive means? No. Okay, I didn't think you would. So naive is another word that we get from French, right? It's one of the many, 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 many words that we have in English that we got from the French. Um, and naive is somebody who is like believes every word, right? Right. So if I said something to you and it was like a, what we call a tall tale, right? it didn't, didn't seem reasonable, right? If you were naive, you would just believe me, right? Because I'm the teacher. So you would just believe me if you were naive. But if you weren't naive, you might be skeptical. We've done skeptical in a few weeks ago. And you might say, I, right, I, I. <laughs> I believe you, right? But you don't really. What, you're, you're being sarcastic there, okay? So let, let, let's look up a dictionary definition of naive, first of all. And then we'll come back to gullible, right? So naive. Notice the pronunciation, it's like, it looks like naive, but it's naive. 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 Naive, okay? Naive. Naive, that's it. Of a personal action, showing a lack of experience, wisdom, or judgment. The rather naive young man had been totally misled. Of a person, natural and unaffected, innocent. Andy had a sweet, naive look when he smiled. Now, when it's being used in this, this way, it's kind of pejorative. Everybody knows that word. We've done it to death in the past, right? Yes? Yeah. Pejorative. Yeah. It's negative. I'm being critical. Mm -hmm. So it's where somebody is not demonstrating judgment and understanding and experience. So um, Alida buys a new car, shows me the car, 
and I, and I say, how much is the car? And she says, a hundred thousand, whatever your currency is, right? It, that's a hundred thousand US dollars, right? If I was naive, I would just accept what she said. But if I was not naive, I might say, I ah, right, it only looks about five grand or 10 grand, not a hundred thousand. So I am questioning what she said to me because I'm not naive, you see? So, so that's, that's using it here in a negative sense, but here it's being used in quite a positive sense. And he had a sweet, naive look when he smiled. It's kind of saying that he's, he's almost childlike in his innocence and there's something attractive about that. Very straightforward kind of person. Yeah, a very straightforward kind of person. So that's what naive is. And so that will help us then with gullible. Um, gullible kind of means the same thing. Easily persuaded to believe something credulous. An attempt to persuade, persuade a gullible public to spend their money. Right? So, gullible is always pejorative, I would say. And it is, it's, it's somebody who just, you can tell them anything and they'll believe it. Hey, I've got an IQ of 200. Oh, really? That's amazing, Alan. Right? But, you would need you'd be very gullible if you if you accepted that yeah because obviously i don't have an iq of 200 right okay have we got gullible any questions on gullible no is that pejorative like pejorative is a very hard like harsh word right yeah so we can say that derogatory instead you could say derogatory, but remember, we did this in one of the lessons. Yeah, Derog I remember, but... Mm -hmm. Derogatory and pejorative essentially mean the same thing. But in pejorative, the, the meaning is like very strong, right? Very strong. It, it, it's not really any stronger. They're both negative. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're both negative. The difference that we noted, which I didn't know before we studied it together a few weeks ago, was that you can, you can say this, not only did he make some pejorative remarks, but uh, you can say um, he used a, a pejorative. I can put the indefinite article in front of it and say a pejorative. Right? You can't say a derogatory. Derogatory is always an adjective, always. But a pejorative, I'm sorry, you, Eo and Alita ignore this comment, right? But this is for Anjali because she's really a native English speaker. That's the difference between those two words. Yeah. Okay. yeah? But that's, that's super advanced English, that. I mean, mm. I didn't know that I, before I kind of read that. I, I, I knew it in my subconscious, but I, could ne I would not have articulated that before I actually read it. So we can use that it was a pejorative remark, but we can never say that it was a derogatory remark. You can, you can say it was a derogatory remark, right? Because we're in both cases there, that's a, an adjective. But you, with a pejorative, you can say it was a pejorative, right? Let me, let, 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 let me use an example, right? Define a pejorative.
see, actually, see, the word can be an adjective or a noun. Was filled with pejoratives. Let me let me look for the example that I'm wanting. So that's quite a good bit of text there. Um, I'll, I'll copy it into the chat because it's kind of useful. Um, So look at, the, look at this sentence here. Children born with an extra chromosome 21 are healthy, with an extra chromosome 21 are healthy, conspicuously happy and destined to live for many years, but they're not considered in that pejorative word, normal. Okay. So I think this is describing, um, down syndrome. I think that's what that's describing. And, and so somebody who has Down syndrome has this extra chromosome. It's and a mental disease, right? Down syndrome. Well, People well, are like quite slow. Yes. Yeah. It, it affects, you know, learning ability. I think it affects longevity as well. Okay. Um, but here they're saying, you know, they're, they're still apart from that, they're healthy, happy, and destined to live for many years, but, but not as long as normal, right? Um, and what they're saying is that the words, they're not normal, is really what that's saying. Um, and they're saying that, that the word normal By describing them like that, it's 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 saying that's a pejorative. Let me. I think So I, I won't look any further. I can't find a good example of what I'm describing, where you, where you use it with the indefinite article, a pejorative. But, but that, yeah, is one, yeah. that, that is one difference between these things that we found before. Okay, I'll look into that. But 
or maybe uh, if you no, find no. that article you can send it yeah i will you can you can find it if you search on pejorative versus derogatory i think that's where i found it last time but i don't okay. want to take any time you know now on that point yeah, yeah. Know, i'm sure i'm right right but to get back to your question the words are essentially synonyms okay derogatory and pejorative are essentially synonyms yeah and so the word we were on was gullible and i'm basically saying gullible is you know not is not a good trait yeah it's not yeah. a good trait to be gullible like just to believe everything right okay so that's gullible selfish now selfish would always be pejorative or it would always be derogatory right for example um i i could say sorry i can say because i am a gullible person uh, unbelievably unbelieve situation happened to me yeah yeah that's all right alida um se selfish um is where you're only really interested in yourself your situation you know, you'd look after, we talk about looking after number one, number one being yourself. And somebody who always looks after themselves rather than others is selfish. If you're the opposite of that, we call that selfless, selfless. So if I, if I described Alida and said, Alida is a totally self less person i'm spelling it wrong self no i'm spelling it right selfless person that would be seen as very positive so let's look up that word selfless first of all self less You approve of them because they care about other people more than themselves. You see that? Exact opposite. She was a wonderful companion and her generosity to me was entirely selfless. The selfless love of a mother for her child. She'll put her child before herself. Right? Synonym for unselfish. But selfless is a much nicer word than unselfish, actually. So let's look up selfish then. Selfish. If you say someone is selfish, you mean that he or she cares only about himself or herself and not about other people. I think I've been very selfish. I've been mainly concerned with myself. My selfish interests of a few people. Cabinet ministers are selfishly pursuing their own vested interests. The arrogance and selfishness of different interest groups never ceases to amaze me. Okay, so that's a, that's a fairly easy one. Everybody comfortable with that? You don't want to be selfish. Generous. Willing to give and share unstintingly. So gener generous, generous. Let me write it down. It could describe financial generosity. Somebody who gives money away, right? To charity, to family, to other people. Not hoarding it. There's a good word. Hoarding money for themselves, right? Somebody like that, you could describe them as a miser. Somebody who's like, you know, gathering all their money and they don't give anything away. And um, another expression we use to say that kind of person, we say, um, 
with long pockets and short arms. <laughs> long pockets and short arms, <laughs> which means they can't get, they can't find their money, right? Because they've got short arms, right? So that's, that's a euphemistic way of saying the same thing, right? That person never gives anything away. You like, you know the kind of person you go to have coffee with, but they never bring their wallet out, right? They never offer to pay. It's always expecting you to pay. Like, I, I've worked with people like that. They never pay, right? That's a very unattractive feature of peop some people. So generosity is a very positive attribute. To be generous, it could be with respect to money, but it could also be with respect to time. Someone who gives their time to other people, yeah? You can also use it to describe affection, right? Someone who gives their affections to others, right? That can be generous, that can, that generous can refer to that. So philanthropists are like generous people. Right? Exactly. So the word that Angie just used there was philanthropist, like that. And there's an extra N in there that, is, that I've spelled it wrong. But so a philanthropist is someone who gives away what they've got to other people. You know, so I guess the archetypal one was Andrew Carnegie. He was actually a Scottish man, went to America and became a millionaire, like a multi-billionaire, right? In the 1800s, I think. And then he decided to give all his money away, right? So he became like a super billionaire and then he decided to, like, to give it all away. Um, and I don't know about other countries, but certainly in Britain, in every town in Britain, there's a library called uh, Carnegie, the Carnegie Library. And that's named after him. And so he, den den he donated the money to buy the buildings and to buy the books. So everywhere in Britain, you can hire a book for free, rent a book in the library. And it was all funded by that one guy. Um, the university in America called Carnegie Mellon University is named after him. So he was a, a benefactor. There's another good word, benefactor. And you can also say patron. People can be described as a patron of the arts, for example. Someone who gives money to the arts is a patron or a benefactor or a philanthropist. All of these words are in the same corner of the universe of the English language. And is it related to Dale Carnegie? Dale Carnegie, no, that's different. Okay. Dale Carnegie is another famous Carnegie and he's famous for one thing, right? writing a book which is called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yeah, yeah, I have that. So that, I think that was written in about the 1960s. Um, I've read it, I don't really love it. But he makes a very interesting point about using people's names. Yeah. And he said that a person's name is the dearest word in all the world to somebody, right? And so to go back to the start of the conversation that we had, when we were talking about how do you um, build rapport, build if I'm going to build rapport with Anjali, I'm going to mention Anjali. How are you feeling today, Anjali? I used your name. Yeah. And that sort of like flicks we switch. Oh, that, that guy knows my name. Or yeah. we're, we're passing the car door in work, right? And I say, hi, Anjali. I don't just say hi. I say, hi, Anjali. You remember that. He knows my name. 
He's interested enough in me to know my name. So he made that point in that book, which is a good point. But Dale Carnegie, no relation whatsoever, other than obviously they're related in some way since they've got, but they've got the same surname. But Andrew Carnegie is a different guy. So, I mean, if we looked him up briefly, just the, in the briefest lookup, right, Andrew Carnegie, he actually hails from really near me here, uh, Dunfermline. He came from Dunfermline, which is 10 miles from me. Scottish-American industrialist and philanthropist. Carnegie led the expansion of the American steel industry in the late 19th century and became one of the richest Americans in history. He became a leading philanthropist in the United States and in the British Empire. Born 1835, Dunfermline. There you go. Literally my nearest town. He died in Lenox, Massachusetts, 1919. So he lived a good, good old age. Spice was Louise. Children, Margaret Carnegie Miller. The man who dies thus rich dies disgraced. Do your duty and a little more and the future will take care of itself. As I grow older, I pay less attention to what men say. I just watch what they do. Okay, so that was philanthropy, all coming out of generosity. I guess we're all comfortable with generosity. Next word is self-confidence. We'll go to half past. We'll finish at half past. Self-confident, right. What is self-confidence? Showing poise and assurance in your own worth. Now, there is a word that's very similar to this, which is called self-esteem. Confidence in one's own worth <laughs> or abilities, self-respect, assertiveness, training. So it's important that people have a reasonable view of themselves and are not always down in themselves. You know, like somebody who has low self-esteem is like, oh, I couldn't do that. I don't, don't ask me. I, I, I couldn't do it. Right. That's, that's the reaction of somebody with low self-esteem. They, they wouldn't put themselves forward and they typically don't think that others want them. Right? They're not confident in themselves and they'll, they'll be that person in the corner of the room not mixing. That's a somebody with low self-esteem. Now, now let's move from that to self-confidence. Let me write this word down before we leave. Self-esteem. Um, self-confidence. Is an attitude about your skills and abilities. It means you accept and trust yourself and have a sense of control in your life. You know your strengths and weaknesses well. You have a positive view of yourself. That doesn't mean an, that doesn't mean an, an overestimate, right? It just means a calibrated perspective. You set realistic expectations and goals, communicated assertively, not afraid to say what you think, and can handle criticism. Oh, uh, you, you're, you're, you're useless. Well, how, if I said that to you, how would you take it? If that would cause you to cower and to be dying, that would say that you don't have good self-confidence. But if you get good self-confidence, you can take that on the chin. Self-confidence. Take it on the chin. Take it on the chin. It comes from boxing. When boxers are fighting one another, 
if you take it on the chin, you're taking it right there. It's, it's, you know, it's quite a severe thing to get punched on the chin. And, and so that's become an expression in English. Take it on the chin. Accept misfortune courageously or stoically. One of her great strengths is her ability to take it on the chin. We, we, we talked about stoically previously, didn't we? I think we did stoic, stoicism. The Greeks, oh, yeah. the Epicureans and that. So, yeah, so, okay. Take it on the chin. That's a good expression to learn. Well, what happens, Similar if, you, to, what happens if you fail that exam, Anjali? What happens if you fail that exam? You could say, I'll just take it on the chin. I'll do a reset. No worries. I demonstrate self-confidence. You think you'll be able to pass it? Oh, absolutely. I'm sure I will. High self-esteem. Yeah. Is it same as the uh, that can-do attitude? Yeah. Very good correlation. Um, can self-confidence and can do self-confident and can do would be would be similar. Take it on the chin is more situational. You know, that doesn't describe an attribute of a person, it describes their reaction to a situation. So I, I, I would just take it on the chin. Like, what if I lost my job? You know, I could, I could become very down about that and miserable and poor and blah. Or I could say, I'll take it on the chin, I'll go get another job. I'm not, don't worry, you know, I've, I've got multiple sources of income. I'll, I'll, I'll find something to do. Yeah? Right. So that's self-confident, respectful. Exhibiting an attitude of admiration or esteem. So you guys are all very respectful of me. It embarrasses me. But to, to a man, even though you're all ladies, we don't say to a lady, we always say to a man, here's an expression, to, to, to a man means every one of you, right? That's a good one to learn that, to a man, right? Um, to a man, phrase, without exception, right? I said means every one of you, right? But a better definition is without exception. How did they use it? To a man, we all look at, took a keen, keen, there's that word coming up again. To a man, we all took a keen interest in the business. To a man, every one of us. It's not a gender specific comment. It's just a, it's just one of, one of those things, right? To a man, you know, because a man is also a man and a woman. I mean, you have that in Spanish, right? It's the patriarchy, right? <laughs> <Always> <laughs> <a man. laughs> well, well, females would say that, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. We got there from respectful, and you guys are all very respectful of me. Much to my embarrassment. Okay, everyone get respectful. Yeah. Yes, it's clear. Okay. Consider it. Now, now obviously being respectful, confident, respectful, considerate, these are all very positive things, right? We've gone through some negative, pejorative, derogatory expressions. Now these are quite positive, considerate. Showing concern for the rights and feelings of others. 
that's a lovely attribute, much to be admired and commented on. He is a very considerate person, or she is a most considerate lady. Yeah. Thinking about others, that's what considerate is. If you knew my wife at all, even a little, you would say she's a very considerate person. And that's true. She is. Yeah. Considerate. Okay. Imaginative. Now, this has got nothing to do with other people. This is, this is the person who has ideas, right? Marked by independence and creativity of thought or action, right? The, the kind of people who create new businesses or come up with new inventions, inventors, or somebody who's like an artist and they can draw things and or sculpture, all of those people are imaginative. So to be imaginative is seen as a very positive attribute. Another word to describe people like that is a creative. That's the, the modern term for that kind of person. A creative person is imaginative. And so businesses are often looking for creatives. Creatives are not always organized. So in any project to get work done, you need people who are organized, good administrators, and you need creatives, the people with ideas. Does everybody get imaginative? Any questions on that? All the entrepreneurs are imaginative, right? They are. To be an entrepreneur, you need to be imaginative and hardworking and crazy. And, and maybe brilliant as well, right? Brilliant. Full of light, shining intensely. Now, that is true, but that's not how we use that word mostly. Right, so like, you know, the brilliant sun or, the, you know, the, you know, but how we use brilliant is really to, to describe intellectual horsepower. Related to academics and all that stuff. So. Yeah, academically smart. Book smart. Um, shining brightly, distinguished, illustrious, having or showing great intelligence, talent, or quality, a brilliant technician, strong and clear in tone, vivid, bright, brilliant blues and greens. Okay, so th this is the one here, I think most, I don't know what I did there. This third definition here is the one that we would use to describe a person. Since we're going through a list that describes people's personas, um, this is the one that you really want. So we're not describing the lights of the city. Yeah, they can be brilliant. Nor are we describing the performance, something that you did. Nor are we describing colors, right, or signs. But we're, we're interested in describing people. So if somebody described me as brilliant, I would be delighted. It would not be representative. I wish I was brilliant. But if I was brilliant, if I was brilliant, Maybe I would be an entrepreneur, right? And start a business and that kind of thing. But you are, <laughs> in a way. Um, can you spell flattery? <laughs> right. 
here we go. So, ah, so here's creative, right? We were talking about creative when we we're talking imaginative and it's the next word, it's the word 16, creative. Having the ability or power to invent to create something, right? That's a creative. So a, a creative can be an adjective or it can be a noun. So let's look that up. So adjective, right? Creative this, creative that. But it's also a noun. Where is the noun definition? I don't like that from. Let's go to Cambridge. Creativity, creativity is noun. Creative thinking, creative talents, creative person, la la la. Nine, see? Dictionary didn't have that, but Cambridge does. A person whose job involves creating original work. Several leading creatives are involved in the advertising campaign. So my youngest son, Daniel, who's 23, he's a creative. And he um, wants a job in advertising. Yeah. So a creative is as a noun is a person. And being creative is an adjective to describe the kind of things that they they do. Okay, we've done we're, we're, we've done creative. What is creativity? Is it a noun? Creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a noun. Uh, let's look that up. Because I, I could demonstrate creativity. The ability to produce or use original news libraries. So you could demonstrate creativity or you could be called a creative or I could describe your idea as creative. That's a very creative idea, Angela. Yeah? Mm, yeah. So again, very positive attribute, but you can't <clears throat> you can't really become a creative, right? You either are, or you're not, right? You know, you're either wired that way or you're not. In my judgment, right, from all my experience in life, you're either one of those kind of creatures, that kind of an animal, or you're not. Now you could have some creative talents without being a full creative, or you could be the sort of person who is just totally not creative, never comes up with ideas, can't solve things, not a problem solver, right? And we'll do this last word and we'll finish with this one, independent, free of external control and constraint. Now, this can be seen as a very positive or it can be seen in a negative in some cultures. I would suspect that in China, somebody who is independent of thought is not highly regarded, right? But in our culture, independence is a very, very strong attribute. And certainly at a personal level, I mean, I describe myself on my CV as independent of thought. So this to me is a very important attribute and one I covet. 
So you might share an idea with me, but I won't necessarily just accept what you say until I can see it for myself. Uh, yeah. So I, I would be not gullible, but I would listen. But I wouldn't necessarily accept your, your judgment on something. I want to see it for myself and come to my own view. That's what being independent is. Being independent is a very positive attitude. Let's just look up this word. Not influenced or controlled in any way by other people, events, or things. An independent inquiry. We all made the same comment, quite independent of each other. An independent politician does not agree or vote with any particular political party. An independent country is not governed or ruled by another country. Belize became fully independent from Britain in 1981. Tibet, once an independent country, is now ruled by China. Trust me, this is a good attribute. He says, yes, I am biased. Okay, was that fun? The hour and a half flew by very quickly. But I don't want to go for another half hour because that would be midnight. It would be 11 o'clock for me. It would be quite late. So I think we'll call it quits there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks all for joining. Thanks, sir, for the okay. class and all these explanations. Well, thank you so much for your time. Okay. <laughs> so what we'll Bye, do... Everybody. I think this is a good list to be going through. So we'll pick up from independent. So on the class on Thursday, I'll pick up from there. Okay. Okie dokie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll see you all. Yes, sir. Bye. Bye. Sir. Bye. 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 B